Hey guys, it's Hannah and welcome back to The Dyslexic Reader. Today I'm going to be showing you all the books that I read in April 2020. I managed to read 18 books this month, which was over 6,000 pages, which was really quite astonishing to me when I realised at the end of the month how much I was getting done. But with quarantine and everything that's going on, I guess it's not really surprising that with more free time and a lot more stress and things going about that uh, the amount that I was reading it just went through the roof. So I want to share before I start with the book some stats. So as I said 18 books, one was an ebook, nine were audiobooks and eight were physical books. So I listened to a lot of audiobooks last month around the start of the month I was sick. So I spent like two weeks in bed so I was just listening to audiobooks non-stop. Eight were middle grade and 10 were adult. I gave one three star, 10 four star and six five star which meant that it was really good. One book was non-fiction so I didn't, it was children's non-fiction so I didn't give it a rating. So I read one non-fiction, two mysteries, four fantasies, four horror books, one paranormal, three magical realism, one sci-fi, one contemporary and one historical fiction. So I think that's quite a good range for the month as well. Uh, sometimes when I I'm reading a lot it's because I've like really been in the mood for a certain genre and I just read like nearly all of it so it's quite interesting that even though I read a lot there was a good span so the first thing that I want to talk about is I finished the full series of The Wizard of Oz um which I started last month and almost finished. I only had a couple of books left to finish at the start of this month and I did within a couple of days. I think I ended up giving all the ones, those later ones, four stars but like it was a low four stars. Some of them were really good. Um, some of the last ones were either brilliant or just okay but they all fell within the kind of four star range. So I managed to finish that series off which was great for me an accomplishment. I finally got through all 14 books. Then I read this was the this was the children's nonfiction. It was called I Hate Reading: How to Get Through Twenty Minutes of Reading Without Really Reading, and I read this specifically to just to see what it was about because obviously as a teacher you have kids that ne don't necessarily enjoy reading, and it can be tricky. So this was kind of a book that was set up in such a way to show it wasn't written in what's the word I'm looking for like a prose narrative it was more like if you can read this then you have already read one page and then the next page was like rule number one reading is stupid and then like how to fool your parents into thinking you're reading just read the same page over and over again for 10 minutes uh, do you know it was like meant to be funny and more of like a comic but what you were actually doing was actually still fooling the child into reading so it was just interesting and it is something that I can see myself cracking out in the future. And that was the start of my oil. So that covered the subject. What subject was a heart on the cover? I have these all written out my laptop. Hold on a second. So, so for the oils readathon, I did get obviously all the subjects done because I read more books than necessary. So the print on this is so small so what was heart in the cover ancient runes so that was my ancient runes read then i read city by courtney summers this was about a girl whose sister was murdered and she was missing and it is from her perspective and also the perspective of a guy who has like a podcast radio show about true crime and he is trying to find Sadie and find out what happened to her and I listened to the audiobook of this and I would recommend listening to the audiobook because it was that kind of like podcast situation it worked really well in an audiobook and I gave that four stars and I think it was quite a high four stars as well and that covered charms which was a white cover my next read was Onyx and Ivory which was the first in the Rhyme Chronicle series by Mindy Arnett. This was a five star. I really really enjoyed this fantasy. It was a like a high fantasy series. 
and I don't really know how to explain it. Let's see what Goodreads describes it as. I'm not sure how to explain it without like wrecking, wrecking the plot but basically people do not like magic users and um our main character is one so although like she's powerful and she's trying to help and there's a bit of political beside it but it is a world where the magic users are almost like the lower class which is always an interesting dynamic to take because normally it's like the ones with the powers are like the rulers and then all the uh, normal people are underneath them so it was interesting to see that flip that was a five stars really enjoyed that and that covered history of magic which was a book featuring wizards or witches um it didn't necessarily call them witches or wizards but there was spell casters so um, i i was going to take it as one again sometimes with these prompts it's hard to know going into the book whether it will or not like i knew from the blurb that there was magic involved but they do not call the magicians witches or wizards so but i'm still going to count that one the next one was continuing with fantasy and this was the first uh, physical book i read um i hate reading was an ebook and then sadie and onyx and ivory were both audiobooks and then i finished the broken earth trilogy with the stone sky by nk jemis and this is another fantasy and this also got a five star from me this is the final to a series which is about the world ending and again um the magic users they're not really magic users they more have like they can affect like tectonic plates and earthquakes and all those sorts of things like they're not just casting spells they more have control over the earth and the earth is almost like an actual like identity a person in this and it's kind of like the enemy and there just keeps being like apocalypse after apocalypse and um yeah it's a really 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 interesting fantasy series and it definitely the first book is hard to start because it just throws you into the middle of the story and as you read you have to piece all the bits together to work out what's going on so it can be very frustrating and it jumps from perspective a lot but once you get into the series I think there's a lot of really unique aspects and I think that's what pushed it to a five star for me and this one did I say what topic this was for this was for Transfiguration, um, which was a book that includes shapeshifting, but I don't want to really go into the as how that's covered in this book because I feel like it's a bit um spoilery. Then I listened to two audiobooks by Mira Grant. Uh the first one was Rolling in the Deep, and the second one was Into the Drowning Deep, and these were both kind of sci-fi based, but mostly horror, but very um science-based horror and they were both about mermaids the first the second one was written first and then the first one was written as a prequel so rolling in the deep um is the prequel so it was written after but i read it first and it is about a tv crew that go out to make a mockumentary about mermaids but obviously the mermaids are real and they come to a horrible end and then into the drowning deep which was the first book written um is about the television crew a number of years later setting out a ship to find out what happened to that original crew and these were both four stars for me mainly because they were just really enjoyable i enjoyed the science aspect of it i have found that i have come to enjoy horror but i do not enjoy like because i always thought i wouldn't enjoy horror because i don't like horror movies but i do enjoy suspense and i like old horror but i don't like this like thrasher gory horror and it's the same in books so this was very science and i especially liked in the second one and um, they were able to catch one of the mermaids and like the scientists were all dissecting it because most of the characters in this are scientists that are being sent out to research this stuff and they were using like proper like biological terms and explaining stuff and how gills work and stuff so i just found that aspect interesting i thought the characters were diverse and actually for a horror book their actions were realistic so overall i enjoyed both of those books and those were two i read them both in audiobook form while i was sick and that really helped me get through and then um 
I was still sick at this point. I dived into a bit of a project that I had been putting off for a while and that was the complete fiction of HP Lovecraft. Now, this is over a That's thousand pages uh, in itself so this was a big, this was like a sixth of my month's reading and I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four star overall because there were some books I really really did not like. I enjoyed, I, I thought that all or the majority of his work was connected and I think you can draw parallels and say well this could be referencing that but the ones that are like definitely like reference the same characters and stuff it's not as much as I thought there's very few um I did not like all the kind of monstery god aspects which I suppose like call Cthulhu and stuff he is most known for but I'm trying to get like the wee list at the front because I'm trying to remember the exact name of the one that I enjoyed most and it was a statement of Randolph Carter and there's a couple of books that deal with Randolph Carter like The Silver Key and those I thoroughly enjoyed like Five Stars I find so interesting it was so like psychological and I really they the stories do not tell you much the majority of these are uh, short stories and they really do not explain. They leave it really to the imagination. And I think that's what allows people to draw connections between the stories. And uh, I just I just thought it was really interesting. It was a really worthwhile project. And I wouldn't necessarily ever reread these or consider myself a massive fan or anything. But it certainly got me through a couple of weeks in bed. And I, I'm, I'm really glad I done it. And I did get a lot of enjoyment. And I was trying to like... I didn't do a lot I'll probably do more in the future if I was ever to sit down but a lot of like looking into like how people think there are connected and how characters are connected and what really happened to this person there wasn't a lot online I was surprised because I know some people are like hardcore Lovecraft fans Um, he was a bit of a nasty guy and uh, so that kind of put me off but the work is good and pioneering I will give him that and this kind of falls into what I was talking about like the scientific psychological horror more so than like slasher horror so um that that was good for me and this one I did use for one of the owls as well and I used it for Herbology which was Mimbalus Mimbletonia a title that starts with M. I do not own, I could not find any audiobooks on my library, anything that began with M that I was remotely interested in but one of these short stories was called Memory so I'm gonna take that like one of the, the books in this collection was called Memory so I'm taking that as my Herbology. Next I read The Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald. This is getting into overlapping with the Isles and the Stay at Home Readathon which happened. Um, This for my Isles I used, did it cover both? Yes it did. This was Astronomy. Um, Read the majority of this book when it is dark outside. So this one I kept on my bedside table and read at night. And it also was like a book that will make you happy or something for the stay at home reading rush because this is one of my favourite books of all time. And George MacDonald, I'll talk about this later because I read another book by him as well this month, um, was heralded as a precursor in fantasy uh, for the likes of Tolkien who cited him as an inspiration but I never really got, I, I love this book and I love the story and there's a cartoon movie which was released in the early 90s I believe by a Hungarian film um, studio which is abs an absolutely cracking movie and my cat turnip is actually named from the cat in the movie which does not appear in the the cat is in the books but it doesn't have a name but um it's just a really fun unique fairy tale that I thoroughly enjoyed and it's one of my favorite books of all time so of course this was a five star that was a reread then I listened to the audiobook of City of Ghosts by Victoria Swab and this was a paranormal middle grade about a girl who almost died um but she didn't but after she came back to life 
she's like connected to this ghost friend of hers. This is almost like an imaginary friend that no one can see and they get into all sorts of adventures and things. And this I really enjoyed. Again, I thought that the characters were well written. I thought that the atmosphere and intrigue was good. And also just the enjoyment. It was just really fun and something different for me. I'd been reading a lot of horror and high fantasy and Lovecraft. And it was nice to get into um, something a bit fun and easy. And this was to cover for the stay at home reading rush it was to cover a book with a house on the cover and you can see kind of behind her in the cover a cityscape so I'm assuming somebody lives in one of those buildings or somebody's home and it covered a muggle studies for the isle which was a book from a perspective of a muggle and although she is connected to a ghost she is in no way has any like magical powers or anything. Uh, my next read was again for both Isles and the Stay at Home Reading Rush which was Whatever Happens to Baby Jane and this was for their something that is not your normal like genre outside your comfort zone uh, for the Arithmancy for the Isles and for I can't remember what this was for for the Stay at Home Reading Rush um I didn't really partake in it I like set out these four books to read in it and I read them but I didn't really partake on online or anything because I was just not in the headspace of the time so I don't have any of that written down and though this month maybe shows otherwise I'm not normally a horror suspense kind of gal um even though I did read all of H.P. Lovecraft and those two other horrors by Mira Grant uh, but normally horror is not my genre at all but I really enjoyed the movie of this with uh, Betty Davis and Joan Crawford and when I saw this book ages ago at the charity shop for 50p I thought I would pick it up and the way I was reading this I think I thought when I found the book that the movie was based off the book but I'm starting to think that the the book was based off the movie although I didn't look into that but it was basically nearly exactly the same there were some instances with some characters that I can't remember are they slightly different or am I not remembering the movie well because I haven't seen it in ages but it's about um baby Jane is a child actress and uh she has a sister and baby Jane kind of grows out because she's a child actress when she becomes an adult she's not famous but her sister um becomes famous as an adult and there's a horrible accent that leaves the sister paralyzed and baby Jane has to care for her and there's a lot of resentment and stuff and Baby Jane starts going a little bit um, wild and doing horrible things to her sister and tormenting her and goes a wee bit off the rails. Uh, I was surprised for the age. Now let's see if I can get an age of this. Uh, it's not the best advocacy for mental health. There definitely is kind of, she's doing these things because she's mentally unstable, which obviously people who have mental illness do not do dangerous things. But this was written in 1960 and they do a lot of talk about um, she's not bad, she's sick, this is an illness. Um, they try to get medical help for her. So I think the people around her maybe act okay but the, the tone of the book is that she is crazy and that's why she's doing all these horrible things. So... But as I said, written in 1960, you can't really expect much more. And I was actually pleasantly surprised that it wasn't completely awful in all the aspects of that. And I gave this a four star because the characters were good. The story is good. It is very intriguing. Uh, like when you're reading it, you want to find out uh, what will happen. And the enjoyment was was up there. I thought it was just uh, like a fun escape. Then I listened to the audiobook of... Opal by Maggie Stiefwater and this was a like short story for the Raven Cycle and this was for potions to read a book that was under 150 pages and this was a short story so the actual physical book of it was only 70 pages or something I listened to the audiobook and I gave it a four star it was the characters that we all know and love from the Raven Cycle and the writing Maggie Stiefwater's writing is good it just didn't hit that five star there was nothing special about it but it definitely was very enjoyable the characters were good the writing the writing was good and it was 
just an extra little taste of that world. I don't think there's any great necessity to read this if you read The Raven Cycle, but um, it definitely was an interesting one. Then one of my another one of my five star reads was The Alienist by Caleb Carr. This is a Netflix TV show. After reading this, I tried to read the show, couldn't even not finish the first episode. It sounds up my alley, hence why I bought the book, but the show was the show was not good in my opinion. It was weird and overly sexualized, I thought, which was almost counteractive to the message in the book. So this is set in New York in this um late 16 not 16, 18, 90s, uh, when Roosevelt is the chief of police and there is a spate of murders and our main characters are kind of, um, they're solving it. It's called The Alienist because um, it says this at, the, at the, the start as a note. I couldn't believe this was written in the 90s. Again, I'll talk about the mental health side of this in a second. But prior to the 20th century, persons suffering from mental illnesses were start to be alienated not only from the rest of society but their own natures so those experts who studied um mental pathologies were therefore known as alienists so it's basically a psychologist were known alienists in the day because of how they um saw um, mentally ill people and it's basically like victorian criminal minds uh so i would explain it and I, I was really, I really thought up until the end of reading this that this was uh, written in the 90s and it really was going to be a bit like the BB Jane scenario. Like at the end we were going to find out that he had like dis dissociative identity disorder or something like that and that was causing him to do this spate of killings but it wasn't like that at all. I thought the mental health aspect was really well handled this person is ill, he's not a monster because he does monstrous things, he has had a troubled past, we need to help this man. Uh, so it was interesting from that point of view, but it was dark. It took me quite a number of days to read this because I would just read a wee bit and then I'd be like, kind of have to do because it's um, child murders. Uh, so some of it was quite heavy, but it was definitely very enjoyable and I actually have bought the sequel which has arrived in the mail so I'll be jumping into it this month hopefully um and I did I really enjoyed it so uh, I recommend the book if kind of like that kind of mystery Victorian criminal minds sounds interesting to you but do not go based off the Netflix show because I thought the Netflix show was rubbish basically well I didn't I can't really say that because I didn't even finish one episode but it was so painful I couldn't finish one episode and did I say what that covered for this was my final book for the stay at home reading rush and it was somewhere you wished you could be in New York I was meant to be on holiday in America not New York but in America and uh, everything cancelled my holidays so I thought I would read a book set in America because that's really where I wished I could have been and for the oils accounted for divination which was assign a number to your tbr and use a magic um random generator to pick it which i did and then that inspired me to actually pick my tbr for may doing a random number generator thing so i have that up on my channel if you want to go watch it and i'm going to keep flying through these books because we're taking up so much time then Back to George MacDonald. Instead of The Princess and the Goblin, this is The Princess and Curdy, and it is the sequel. And this was five star two. I have never read this book, um, despite Princess and the Goblin being one of my favourite books. I have owned this for a while, but never uh, read it. I think I was a bit scared for Isles. This counted for... It was a beak on the cover. Care of Magical Creatures, Hippogriff, Bird with a Beak on the cover. And if you can see, the they have like peacocks in the background here. And this was fantastic. This was five star. And from this, I really did get how people at his time and shortly after his time really heralded him as a real pioneer within if this was released today we would call it a political YA fantasy it was it was really intriguing and I won't say it's it's not as fun it's not as fairy tale 
as the princess and the goblin but it got a five star for its uniqueness and like pioneering style alone the way the characters are written the storyline the kind of the target audience you get from reading this who it was aimed at it was all really really interesting so i would say definitely if you're interested in like fairy tale fantasies something unique princess and the goblin but if you and i don't think you really the goblins and all don't really play into the second one so much so um i don't think it's an absolute necessity to have read one to have read the other but definitely if you consider yourself a fan of like ya political fantasies then you should pick this up just for the intrigue of like kind of where the genre almost started and to give you an idea of when oh it's not first published in 1882 like 150 years ago well not 150 but not far off 100 100 and i don't know 38 or something years ago and th this is like a current as i said why like political f fantasy um super super intriguing uh, so that's definitely one that i would tell people to point out the next one i did read the physical book but it is uh downstairs i don't know why i missed that one i'm bringing it up for me and this was killing time by caleb carr after reading the Al alienist i looked through all his works i bought the sequel to the alienist which i haven't got to yet and also killing time and this was a five star read for me this didn't finish my oils were finished by the stage so none of these latter books are for any readathon and it was super interesting so it's set in 2023 and it is about a group of people who say that the internet age is um it's too it's so easy to manipulate people basically the kind of fake news idea so they go about trying to challenge uh, like channel challenge there's the word uh how people like take on media in such a media heavy age but this was written i think it was 2000 or 2001 and like it's eerily accurate in 2020 the american president did get assassinated and uh, the way they talk about like they talk about the 07 financial crash and everything um uh, by 2023 apparently we're all flying around in hover ships with like laser guns and stuff which maybe isn't the most accurate but some of it is is eerie i think the message is really good i think it's very um like morally interesting i think the characters are good it's certainly intriguing and well i've only read two kill of car books now but his writing is great as well it's real you get into the flow of it and you you lose two hours just in his words which is really cool so this was another five star for me that i thoroughly enjoyed and if that sounds up your alley like i really like i got this online second hand and it arrived in perfect condition for like two pounds um yeah his books seem to have been heralded even then so there seems to be a lot of them about but because they're so old they're certainly not expensive to pick up online so um if that sounds up your alley as well this was great then after um watching a oil crate video uh one of the girls mentioned eva ibbotson who in my brain did not register until they showed the cover of this book I owned this book as a child, uh, Journey to the River Sea, but I never read it. It was too hard for me. I guess it was kind of pitched at like 11 to 12 year old, but 11 to 12 with my dyslexia, I was not able to read it. Um, by the time I probably would have been able to read it at 15 or 16 years old. It had been lost, it was gone, it was given away, I had no interest, whatever. But when I saw the cover, it sparked and they really said Eva Ibison was a great author. So I thought I would look into it and found um, the book on my library app and i give it a four star this is about a girl who is an orphan and uh she gets sent to live in the amazon with some distant relatives they're like the only relatives left and they aren't very nice to her and uh she befriends locals and just the whole story involves and i thought that the writing the writing was good again for a middle group book i feel like i've had a lot of char good characters in books this month and um, for a middle grade book like sometimes I feel middle grade like the adults just act and you read it as a 
child and think it's funny and yeah like adults are so mean and then you read as an adult and you're like that is not like a nice way to portray adults and how they act to children um but obviously there was mean adults in this like her aunt was quite mean to her and stuff but overall i thought the characters were were realistic um and i just had a lot of intrigue and atmosphere and the fact that it was set in the amazon was super interesting so it got a low four star but it did get a four star and then i also went on to read the secret of platform 13 by eva ibison um from the library as well because they said that that was probably her most well known and one of her best works so i thought I enjoyed that first one I would check out this one and again it got a four star but probably slightly higher this is about an island where all the kind of a lot of magical creatures live and the king of the island is stolen as a baby but the gate to the normal world only opens up so many years so when he's stolen away as a baby they have to wait I don't know 10 years or whatever it is for the gate to reopen so that they can go back and get him back and there's you know obviously he doesn't know blah 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 don't want to give it away but literally from like chapter two the whole plot of the book was just let out it was as plain as the nose of my face it was so obvious the characters were good it was fun it definitely had harry potter vibes and i believe it was written in 94 so about the same time and uh, there definitely was those kind of vibes kicking about it was very fun the characters were really like good and the week characters there was good pacing but like from like page three I could have like wrote out like the whole novel myself because it was so clear where it was going there was no shocks there was no surprises there was no hidden twists but it still got a four a four star it was still the writing was the writing is good the characters were good it was very fun and very quick and I think kids would really enjoy it especially if you have a a, a kid that is into that kind of Harry Potter vibe but you maybe think like they maybe read the Philosopher's Stone but they're not ready to progress on to the later books with heavier topics this is definitely fits into that car um category and I would recommend it then we have two more to go I read The Silver Sword by Ian I know I can never Seralier there you go this is a 1950s book it's set in world war ii and it is about some children traveling from war warsaw to switzerland to try and be reunited with their family who have been split up because of the war i really really loved this it got a four star but it was a really high four star the writing was good the pacing was really unique if you follow me on instagram i'll put all my links all my social media down below i was doing my stories and i was talking about this the characters again were believable the story was heart-wrenching i didn't cry but like there was emotional parts and it was like happy without being like unrealistically happy it wasn't devastating either but it was sad like it was the right balance and as i said i read this when i was in primary school and when i saw it recently it like really clicked i like really remembered it uh, I'm not I'm still not sure why when finishing reading it it was a good book I normally don't like World War II set books um the pacing was weird the chapters were very short but some of the chapters spanned a month and some of them spanned a minute it was very odd in that sense like this whole book uh probably takes place over four or five years so that was interesting um it is not a true story but it is based on a true story obviously characters names and stuff has been changed and maybe character the odd um interaction was added or whatever the base of it is a true story i don't know why it's stuck in my head for the last um i don't know 15 years but uh, it had still not sure why but it was interesting to pick up and check out nevertheless and again um children who enjoy wartime books this is definitely a new, a new unique one that's really fun and my final book when i wrote out my review for this it somehow got to three star it like literally just scraped three star i did not enjoy this at all and it was fire girl forest boy by chloe dakin i got this out from the library before this all started it sat on my shelf for a couple of days and i was like i think i should just return that because um like I don't think I'm going to read it I don't know what drew me to it in the first place it kind of sounded fun but there was just something in me that wasn't pulled to it so I was like no I'm just going to return that and literally the next day when I was planning to go to the library and return this and get a stack of more books to keep me going all the libraries shut 
So I never got to go and get my other books and I never got to return this and it's just been sitting there the whole time. And it was coming to like the last two days of the month and I knew I only needed like 40 more pages or something to pass me past the 6,000 mark. So I was like, this will probably be a quick read. It's about, um, again, it's set in the jungle. I am in Peruvian. It's set in Peru. It is from two characters' perspective, Maya and Raul. And they it goes like one chapter, one chapter, one chapter, one chapter. It's prose is weird. It's like a very like poetic um I used to stare up at the mobile shadows dancing, wondering where she went, like someone snout out a light, like a candle. Light. Light is dad thing. Like it's very like it's almost like stream of consciousness, but well punctuated. Um, I did not connect to the characters. There was no intrigue. There's like this whole thing about like floating like characters. It was all just very bizarre. Uh, the basis of it was kind of like an environmental deforestation kind of story. I don't think it's the best book out there to teach about that. Um, I didn't want to read it. I wasn't enjoying reading it. I wasn't connected with the characters. I just kept zoning out. Uh, I didn't like the writing style really. So it was kind of a flop. <sighs> And it be, the, probably the only reason was that it ended up scraping as three star is I was a bit generous when, when grading it in certain things because I know it was more of a me problem than a problem with the book and I can see people enjoying this but it just it just wasn't for me so that was kind of a bad way to end the month but it was a good reading month nevertheless as I said that was my only three star and um, the rest were four or five star so can't really shake my head at that. I'm going to just wrap this up very quickly because the video is already too long. I hope you're all happy. I hope you're all healthy. Please stay inside. Stay safe. Take care of yourself physically, but also mentally as well. Uh, all my social media is down below if you need to chat about books or anything else. And hopefully I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.